Hi, my name is Eric Wilkie. I'm here to talk to you about the new hotness in emergency medicine, which has actually induced hypothermia post cardiac arrest. So, if you're watching this, that means you've got an interest in it, you've heard about it. Uh, so, we're going to talk a little bit about the studies that led to induced hypothermia post cardiac arrest, uh, and then we'll talk about our protocol and how we do it, uh, and then show you the Arctic Sun device, which is what we typically use uh, on our patients that present uh, requiring this therapy. Now, we have to go all the way back to 2002 uh, to look at some of the original studies that were published in the New England Journal that sort of led to where we are today uh, with the uh, American Heart Association guidelines right now. Um, there were two studies. One was done in Europe, one was done in Australia. Um, the numbers are not huge, but we'll talk about these and we'll put a slide up so you can see what we're talking about. Um, but this is sort of the genesis behind the current recommendations. Uh, so the first study is the treatment of comatose survivors in out-of-hospital cardiac arrest with induced hypothermia. Uh, again, both of these studies are in the same issue of the New England Journal of Medicine of February 2002. Uh, this particular study had 43 patients uh, in the treatment arm and 34 patients in the control arm. Um, and with that, 49% of the hypothermic patients versus 26% of the control group were discharged home with a good outcome. Uh, and what they did on this particular study was drop the corporate temperature down to 33 degrees Celsius within two hours of return to spontaneous circulation, and then kept them there for 12 hours. Uh, so that's very similar to the next study, um, which, uh, again, February 2002, New England Journal, uh, where they had 136 patients uh, in the hypothermic arm, or the treatment arm, and 137 patients in the control arm. Uh, and again, the results were fairly impressive. 55% had a favorable outcome with hypothermia versus 39% of the control. Uh, so with these two studies, again, uh, a short six years ago, uh, it sort of led to uh, changes in ACLS protocol and recommendations. Uh, and now, uh, the American Heart Association states that unconscious patients that have returned to spontaneous circulation uh, uh, after out-of-hospital VFib should be cooled down to 32 to 34 degrees centigrade for 12 to 24 hours. So this is, encompasses both treatment protocols of these last two studies and gives you some wiggle room. Uh, you can cool them for 12 hours, you can cool them for a full 24 hours. Uh, there's a little bit of a temperature range. And, and then the American Heart Association also put in a little bit of caveat saying that, well, this is recommended for VFib, but if you have another rhythm and you get a spontaneous circulation back with intermittent comatose, you can try it on them as well. Uh, and so it states that unconscious patients that have returned to spontaneous circulation uh, uh, after out-of-hospital VFib should be cooled down to 32 to 34 degrees centigrade for 12 to 24 hours. So this is, encompasses both treatment protocols of these last two studies and gives you some wiggle room. Uh, you can cool them for 12 hours, you can cool them for a full 24 hours. Uh, there's a little bit of a temperature range. And, and then the American Heart Association also put in a little bit of caveat saying that, well, this is recommended for VFib, but if you have another rhythm and you get a spontaneous circulation back with intermittent comatose, you can try it on them as well. Uh, and so this is what we have based our protocol on. We've taken it from several different places and has a, a little bit of an amalgamation of other uh, uh, people's protocols as well as some of our own twists. And we'll talk about those. Now, if we're going to induce somebody, there's some inclusion criteria, and then there's some relative exclusion criteria. The inclusion criteria means that you have to be comatose after cardiac arrest with a return of spontaneous circulation. Uh, it also states that you have to maintain a blood pressure uh, without pressors and after CPR, which may make this a little tricky on a, a, a certain population. Uh, and they have to be obviously comatose at the time of cooling. Uh, we don't want to treat screaming patients as we cool them down to 32 degrees centigrade. Now if we talk about some of the relative exclusions, uh, major head trauma, uh, any type of uh, surgery within the last two weeks, uh, systemic infection or sepsis, uh, coma due to other causes, uh, like I guess if you've shot up a bunch of heroin that, you know, that probably will explain the coma. We don't have to cool you off. Uh, and then any patient with a known clotting disorder. Uh, and the reason why
is when you induce hypothermia, it can lead to a DIC type picture and cause a lot of problems with bleeding. Uh, so the two main things we, we watch out for when we're uh, performing this is, again, the bleeding disorders as well as hypotension, both of which you can see with hypothermia. So our goal is to cool them down to 32 to 34 degrees centigrade uh, and keep them there for 24 hours uh, and then slowly rewarm them. And again, all the protocol that we have is geared to, to watching for dysrhythmia, hypotension, and DIC. Those are the big three. And, and to that end, we recommend that you have an arterial line in place, you have a, a central line in place to measure CVP, uh, as well as uh, easy access to frequent blood draws, which will be required. Now, if we talk about our protocol specifically, and we went through the inclusion and exclusion criteria, uh, and then the methods are that uh, you induce the hypothermia after uh, obtaining some basic labs by one of two things. Either you can apply the Arctic Sun device, which we'll show you in just a minute, or you can do uh, some other type of cooling mechanism, such as ice packs, a cooling blanket, um, and there's also the infused saline uh, that you can do, and this is 4 degrees centigrade saline, and it's 30 cc's per kilogram, uh, which in my mind is a lot of fluid to push rapidly in a post-resuscitation patient. Uh, the uh, trick is to monitor their temperature carefully and don't overshoot, because if you get too cold, they can get much worse. If, um, not sure if you, you don't get quite cold enough, um, but these, uh, these mechanisms of cooling the patient seem to be a little problematic, which is why we like the Arctic Sun device, because we can just dial in a number and walk away and forget and not have to worry about uh, tweaking our, our fluid rates or taking the blanket off or putting the blanket back on. It's all sort of taken care of for us. And some other things to remember in the protocol is we want to maintain a mean arterial pressure greater than 90 millimeters of mercury. Um, and that's to make sure we maintain a good cerebral perfusion pressure. And, and if you notice any problems with dysrhythmia, significant hemodynamic instability, or the development of DIC, then the cooling should be stopped and the patient should be rewarmed in an active fashion. Um, when it comes to rewarming, hopefully they're long gone out of the emergency room and they're the problem of the intensive care unit. Uh, but to rewarm them, you want to go anywhere between half a degree and a degree centigrade uh, every hour until the patient uh, reaches a normal temperature. Uh, so that's sort of our rewarming criteria. And, and again, you need to monitor for all the major problems, hypotension and, and DIC as well as dysrhythmias, uh, during both the cooling process while they're cool and during the rewarming process. Now, at the end of this, we'll put up two links to websites. We're going to put on Google Documents both the protocol as well as a order set. Uh, these will be published so anybody can get them. You can download them. You can modify them, tweak them, do whatever you need to for your setting. The other thing you need is a measurement for core temperature. Uh, this can be done through a esophageal temperature probe or through a critical or Foley. Uh, so th that's key and uh, uh, the Arctic Sun device actually won't run unless you have that connected uh, so it can measure the core temperature so it knows how much to cool and how much to warm. So why don't we take a look at the Arctic Sun device right now. To set up the Arctic Sun, you're going to turn it on. This will be your first thing that comes on the screen. You'll press down for menu. And then, depending on uh, position order of, of the temperature, you will set your temperature. It says enter to change, so we will enter. And you go up or down from 37 degrees Celsius to the desired temperature. And 33. Alright, once you get your temperature in, you enter to accept. So this part is ready, and you're going to now hook it up to the patient. The temperature probe that we will be using is a critical catheter. You will have the catheter in the patient. There is a green cord that comes out of the tubing that you normally would plug into a critical machine. But instead of using that machine, we'll take the green plug. Plug it into the cord on the back, just like this. 
It should all be hooked up on the back. You shouldn't have to change anything. It's also already full of water, so you don't need to add water. So once you have the temperature probe in place, you'll connect these to the pads. There's several different pads and sizes that are all self-explanatory as far as where to place them on the patient. This would be a universal pad. You can press place across the abdomen and on both sides. This one, I, it does have all three. Um, let's see, we have medium and large kits as well. So it's really easy to connect. You'll connect to both of these. Um, and there's several places you can connect them to. But on the connectors, one side will be blue, one side will be white, and they correspond to these. So it's very easy. You snap it in. It's simple as that. Um, to disconnect it, there's some uh, plastic things on the side you'll squeeze to pull out. So once you have the, them connected to here, placed on the patient, your temperature probe is plugged in. You have your correct temperature set. And you are just going to push automatic here. I don't know that I can. Without it hooked up, right? Mm -hmm. Without it hooked up. Um, any other instructions will be displayed on the screen here. Uh, the other important thing you want to remember if the patient is going to be transported uh, to ICU, they have their own machines. You'll want to purge the system, which just empties all the water from the pads back into the machine. Uh, you can keep them hooked up until you get over there and then purge it. Uh, but if you don't do that, you will have a mess of water everywhere. That's about it. It's really easy. All right. That's the quick and dirty on induced hypothermia. And thanks to Audrey, who was uh, our nurse that showed us how to put that together. Um, and again, go to the website, download the protocol, download the order set, do whatever you need to to change it, modify it, uh, use it as your own. And good luck. Thanks.